hello friend uh, today in this lecture we talk about mechanical gauges their description and the operating mechanisms uh, <clears throat> we earlier on discussed the manometers that uh, they are comparatively for low pressures and uh, we know if we need to measure high pressures then a mechanical gauge is uh, a suitable pressure measuring instrument that we can use so the different types as earlier on talked about uh, there is a burden tube gauge pressure um, burden tube burden tube gauge pressure then there is a diaphragm gauge and a vacuum gauge to begin with is a, a burden tube pressure gauge and uh, it is used for measuring high as well as low pressures a simple form of this uh, instrument is shown in the figure below in this case the pressure element consists of a metal tube of approximately a elliptical cross-section and uh, this tube is bent in a form is bent in a form of a segment of a circle and responds to pressure changes when one end of the tube is attached to the gauge uh, when one when one end of the tube which is attached to the gauge case is connected to the source of pressure the internal pressure causes the tube to expand uh, whereby circumferential stress uh, in other words hoop tension is set up the free end of the tube moves and is in turn connected by suitable levers to a rack which engages with a small pinion mounted on the same spindle as the pointer Thus, the pressure applied to the tube causes the rack and pinion to move. The pressure is indicated by the pointer over the dial, which can be graduated in a suitable scale. And therefore, the pressure required can be read on the scale and then recorded. A burden tube generally is made of bronze or nickel steel uh, the former is generally used for low pressures and the latter for high pressures depending upon the purpose for which they are used burden tube gauges are made in different forms and some of them are the compound tube are used for measuring uh, pressures both above and below atmospheric pressure then um, there is a double burden tube a burden a double burden tube which is uh, used where vibrations are encountered so this is a, a diagram of a burden tube a pressure gauge uh, of course this is a burden tube uh, this is where it derives its name uh, there is a pinion gear here this is a pointer uh, this is a rock so when there is a pressure to be measured uh, this rock there will be a hoop tension which will be set up in this rock and so the movement will cause uh, the the rock uh, 
to rotate with its pinion gear causing the pointer to rotate on a scale and therefore uh, the pressure measurement will be able to be taken. Another type of a mechanical gauge is a diaphragm gauge and this type of gauge employs a metallic disc or a diaphragm instead of a bent tube. This disc or diaphragm is used for actuating the indicating device. When pressure is applied on the lower side, as uh, in the following diagram, when pressure is applied on the lower side of the diaphragm, it is deflected upward. This movement, this movement of the diaphragm is transmitted to a rack and pinion. The latter is attached to a spindle or to the spindle of the needle moving on a graduated dial. The dial can again be graduated in a suitable scale and therefore this movement as a result of the pressure on the lower side on the diaphragm can cause um, a reading on the graduated scale and therefore uh, the pressure measured here by the diaphragm gauge can be noted and uh, as we can see uh, this is the drawing uh, here is a is a rock this is a rock um, with a pinion this is a needle and uh, below here is a corrugated diaphragm so when the pressure is applied here it causes this diaphragm to move up and this uh, upward movement of the diaphragm causes the pinion and the rock to have a particular movement thereby causing this needle to move on a scale and therefore the pressure uh, reading can be noted. The third one uh, we are going to talk about is a vacuum gauge. Abaddon gauges discussed above can be used to measure vacuum instead of pressure. Slight changes in the design are required in this purpose. Thus, in this case, the tube, uh, the tube be bent inward instead of outward as in pressure gauges. The vacuum gauges are graduated in millimeters of mercury below atmospheric pressure. In such cases, therefore, absolute pressure in millimeters of mercury is the difference between the barometer reading and the vacuum gauge reading. Uh, therefore, the pressure required here is the negative is the negative pressure. As we have already talked about it, that the pressure uh, vacuum uh, vacuum is equal to uh, the barometric uh, reading which is the atmospheric pressure minus the pressure uh, measured by the gauge. Uh, so the pressure, uh, uh, the vacuum gauges are used to measure the vacuum in condensers etc. Uh, if there is leakage, the vacuum will drop. So uh, they are majorly used to, to measure pressures in vacuums. The pressure gauge installation requires the following considerations. And the one, flexible, a flexible copper tubing and the compression fittings are recommended for most installations. Uh, two, the installation of a gauge cork and T in the line close to the gauge is recommended because it permits the gauge to be removed for testing or replacement without having to shut down the system. Then three, pulsating pressures in the gauge line are not required. The number four, 
the gauge pressure and its connecting line is filled with an inert liquid and as such liquid seals are provided. Trapped air at any point of the gauge lines may cause serious errors in the pressure reading. Therefore, it should be avoided if possible. Uh, so, in summary, in summary, we have talked about uh, mechanical gauges and the mechanical gauges are uh, of different types. We talked about a burden tube, one, a burden tube, burden tube, uh, pressure, pressure gauge, and two, we talked about the diaphragm, the diaphragm, the diaphragm gauge. Um, then we talked about the vacuum, the vacuum pressure gauge. And uh, we said uh, for a, ba a burden tube um, is divided into two. We have a compound burden tube and a double burden tube. We have also we have. one a compound compound burden cube and we also discussed about a double double burden cube burden cube which is basically uh, used where vibrations vibrations are involved. Thank you so much for following us. Please view our next lectures. May God.